I have a quick tip for you on how you can use a power bank and a USB cable to start a fire. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, a few things just before we begin. First off, I want to thank Steve at the YouTube channel, So Steve, for inspiring me to make this video. Steve demonstrated something some months ago, maybe even a year ago now, and how he used solar panels in his greenhouse to do something very similar. And I commented on that to Steve that I might try this with a power bank out in the woods. And Steve, if you're watching, thank you so much for that. I'll make sure I put a link to Steve's channel in the uh, video description below, and maybe even a link to that specific video that inspired me at the end of this video. Okay, so a couple of things more. Uh, number one, you do need one more item to make this work, and that is something like this. This is extra fine steel wool. This works the best, at least in my experience, but it's not the only thing. Anything that's very fine, very thin, and metallic, and will conduct electricity, electricity likely will work for this, but I have not found anything that works quite as well as steel wool, or at least quite as consistently as steel wool. So that is the other thing you need to use. Now, here's the other thing I want to talk about. Why would you want to do this in the first place? Why would you take a valuable resource like your power bank and your USB cable and cut the cable that, to start a fire? Well, the only way I can think of you may have to do that is because you failed to plan for the possibility of getting lost or being in a situation where you had to have a fire. I would sooner save my power bank and my cable to charge my phone keep my phone active and ready for to contact help. Now, of course, there's a few things that uh, you have to consider here. Number one, your phone is working. If your phone's not working, then it's not a resource to use to call for help, and your power bank may as well be used for starting a fire. Number two, you're in a cell phone serviced area. If you can't reach anybody by cell phone, then again, it's not going to help you do a whole lot of good for you. So that's where, again, another opportunity to use these and not be uh, worried about ruining a resource. Other than that, carry multiple ways to start a fire. Don't do this if you have other ways of starting a fire. And if you decide that you want to use your power bank and your cable to start a fire with, at least make sure your phone is fully charged or you have already called for help, you know they're on the way and you really need to have that fire now. All right, let's put that out of the way. What we're going to do is I'll reposition the camera. I'll show you how this all goes together and then we'll do the demonstration. So let's just go over what is required to make this work. So start with you need some source of power. In this case, I have my uh, 10,000 milliamp hour backup battery bank that I carry with me quite a bit of the time, not always, but I often carry this with me, especially during the winter, because there are any number of things that I want to charge, including things that I use for the camera that I'm recording this with. So I usually have a power bank with me. If I don't have this power bank with me or one like it, Here's something else that I've used before, and this is my Wubin C2 flashlight. I do have a review on this flashlight, and one of the things that is really cool about it is that inside where the USB-C charging port is, is also an output port that you can use the battery, which has quite a bit of uh, power in it, to charge your cell phone so or other devices with. So this is a nice flashlight for that purpose. Sometimes this goes out as just my battery bank or in the case if I need it, it's also a flashlight of, of course. All right, so we have those things. Let's put that aside. You're going to need some steel wool. Now I'm gonna pull off a little steel wool right now just to show you, you don't need a whole lot of this. Yeah, not very much at all. This is probably way more than I'm going to need for this. And I'm just going to open it up so that it's quite you know, spread out, thin, if you will. All right, so there is my steel wool. Now, that's not all you're going to need. So the same principles for starting a fire any other way apply here. So what I've done is I've made a small bird's nest, I'm losing it all, of some dry birch bark and I've shredded it down very, very finely, and uh, that's going to be what catches the flame, because when you, th the way to look at steel wool is like a flash tinder, very much like thistle down or a cattail down, something that will catch a spark, light up very quickly, but it also burns out very quickly, so you need something to catch that flame and extend it, and of course this is just a very, very small, if you will, 
uh, bird's nest of birch bark. You can see how I've buried it all in here. And uh, what I would have, of course, is I'd have all my kindling, my very finest, right through to my fuel already, because if you're making this work, you don't want to waste your energies and materials to do this. You want to do this and get it started quickly. So have all your fire making materials ready. And then of course, let's uh, bring in the next item, which is essential to make this work, which is your USB cable. So it really doesn't matter what type of it's a USB-A, USB-C, USB or micro USB. They're all going to work very much the same. So I'm not even sure what this was, but here's what I did. I cut the end off. I exposed four cables inside. There is going to be a black one, or in this case, it was bared, it's a ground wire, a red one, which carries the current, and often a blue and a green wire. And those are the data wires that are inside of this cable. So what I did is I cut the end off. I cut off the blue and green wire, leaving myself with my ground wire and my power wire, the, the red one. Uh, just a thought here, when I did this, I hadn't considered, you know, if I was had been smarter, I would have cut it off and left some length for the part that goes into my foam so that I could, if I needed to, I could reconnect this back together to charge my phone again after I had my fire started. Uh, you know, yeah, so like I said, this is one of those, you're up against it, you really need to have a fire going. Uh, you're probably not going to think about that, but if you if you think about it for a few moments, there's no reason why you couldn't reassemble the wire and uh, and do it again. So, or put it back together so you can charge your phone up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to back the camera up a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. And I have a fire pit right next to me so that I can throw the tinder bundle into the fire pit once it's lit up. All right, so here is my tinder bundle with the steel wool in the center my USB cable. Uh, they're spaced to probably half inch, three quarters of an inch apart. That is the uh, ground wire and the positive wire. Now, one thing I'll just mention in case I need to do it is, um, this will start to glow and spread away from the contact points, but it can be helpful if you blow on it like you would a uh, like a little tinder bundle. So well, this will happen very quickly. I may need to blow on it, but then I'm going to have to toss it into the fireplace. So here we go. Let's get it ready and start. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, hopefully I caught that on camera before I burnt myself with it because it lit up so quickly, but there's the results of the, the steel wool. You actually can still see the steel wool in the center of the fire pit there. All right, so that was just a quick demonstration of how you can use a power bank and a USB cable to start a fire. Now, remember, this is a true survival tip. It is not something you do on a regular basis. You probably could make a fire starter like that if you wanted to use it, but I'm not sure why you would want to. Be prepared, take numerous ways of starting a fire, ferrocerium rods, bit lighters, whatever else you want to carry with you. Have those available to you at all times so that you don't have to cut your cable up and ruin a resource you may need to keep your phone or your flashlights charged with. I want to thank Steve for inspiring me to make this video because it was because of him. I hadn't really considered this before, but it was because of Steve at So Steve that I decided to bring this happen to you. All right, if you have any comments, any questions, any concerns, any suggestions, put them all in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.